Hi everyone, I'm Anand Sitaram, Assistant Professor in the Computer Science Department at the State University of New York Binghamton. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to effectively find related work for your research and how to find papers that are relevant to the research that you're conducting. This video is going to be mainly pertaining to computer science, but you can extrapolate it to other research fields as well. Now, in in computer science, every year, whichever sub area of computer science you work in, hundreds and thousands of papers are published, and it is very hard to find out papers that are important to you and are relevant to your research. Of course, there is so much related work getting published that it's hard to keep up to all the related work that is has been published and how to improve upon related work. So here in this video, I'm going to talk about some tips that you can use to find relevant research that is pertaining to your problem and to figure out where you should guide your research and what is the problem that you should tackle. So I'm just going to give you a few tips of how to get started here. So the first and one of the most simplest things that you can do is go to your professor's website. Most professors in computer science have a website where they put up their recent publications and by going through the publications of your professor, you can find out a bunch of related work. For example, here, this is my personal website. And as you can see that there are a bunch of papers. I have categorized them by conferences and journals. Many professors just list them in chronological order. Regardless of what is the style of your professor, you can find out all their relevant publications on their website. And this is a good place to get started because if you are working with a particular professor, most likely you will be working on problems similar to the ones that they have worked on in the past. So their recent research could give you some idea of what kind of problems to pursue in the future and where to look for related work. The second uh, option for you, which is also the case, uh, which usually happens to be the case, is your professor gives you a paper to read, one paper or a couple of papers to read so that you can get started. So this is an example of a paper that I wrote with one of my PhD students. And say you are a PhD student who's coming to work with me and I give you this paper. Now you can read this paper, of course, you read them, read it carefully. And but then how do you find other research papers? So what you can do is you can scroll to the end of this paper and at the end you will find a bunch of references. You can see that there are 20 uh, papers here which are related to this particular paper that have been published. So what you can do is you can look at some of these papers that are of interest to you and then look at references of those papers and that should give you a whole bunch of papers that you could potentially explore. So that is one way for you to find more research papers that are interested to you. Now, I work in the area of computer networking and one of my research areas is related to caching and you can see that this paper is also related to caching. So I'm going to talk about how with respect to caching how you can find some related work. So another way is to look at top conferences in your field and once again you can ask your advisor as to where which are the top conferences in in the field. If not as I mentioned, you can just go to your uh, advisor's website and that will list where they publish their research and by looking at where they have published their research, for example, you can look at some of the journals that I have published in, some of the conferences, that should give you a fairly good idea of, of the work that you might be doing and which conferences you might be publishing in. So say you locate a conference like that through your advisor's webpage or you just ask your advisor. Now. For example, here, Infocom is an important conference in my area of research. So the, a good idea to find related work is to go to the, to the to conference, to Infocom's previous edition. For example, I have opened this page of Infocom 2019. Now, what, I, what you can do is go to its technical program once it has been published, and then you can just search for... Uh, the keywords to figure out what are the papers that have been published. For example, Infocom here publishes around 300 papers in the general area of networking each year. So it's hard to find out 
not all uh, all papers will be in the area that you're interested in. So for example, I am interested in, in a topic called information-centric networks or content-centric networks. It's also known as cache networks. So I just want to read those papers. So what you can do is you can do a simple search on this page. And as you can see, there are eight matches with the word content. And you can just quickly go through this. So for example, this paper, wireless multicasting for content distribution, stability and gain delay analysis this is something that i would be interested in so i would go ahead and read this paper similarly once again this one is for uh, uh, is related to content delivery it's also related maybe not completely related to the kind of work that i do and then you see as i told you i work in the area of information centric network or content centric network and there is a special session just de dedicated to this so there are four papers in this session and i could just go ahead and read those papers so doing a bunch of search with different keywords that you're interested in would give you relevant papers. So Infocom is just one such conference in your area. There could be other conferences or there could be multiple conferences. And you can go to the past two editions of that conference to figure out what are the papers that have been published and read those related work. That's a good way to keep track of what is happening in the field without getting lost in this huge number of papers that get published. Additionally, there are sometimes conferences that are related to your specific area of research. For example, Infocom is a conference which is related to networking in general. So people who work in different areas of networking, whenever they do research, they, they try to publish their work in Infocom. Now, if here I am interested in this area called information-centric networks, and there is a conference specifically targeted on information-centric networking. So if you work in a research area like that, which has a targeted conference in that area, you can actually go ahead and look at the papers that have been published in that specific sub area. So I'm, I went to ACMIC in 2019. And by looking at uh, the papers here, I can see that a whole bunch of papers have been published and this is a good way to get started. You can see that even in this sub area of information centric network, there are specific aspects that you might be more interesting to you than uh, another. And you can look at that by looking at this sessions. For example, he, there is here there is session two using namespaces. So that's one way to find out. Now getting access to papers, that is another thing that is in important and most while many uh, authors publish their papers on their web page so that you can easily access them not all authors do that and sometimes it might be hard to get access to a paper because it is in IEEE Explore or ACM Digital Library and you can't access those without a, a subscription so then the subscription is uh, expensive so so what do you can you do even if you find a relevant paper maybe it's not there on IEEE Explore. So this is a website called Archive, but maintained by Cornell University. And here nowadays, lots and lots of researchers are publishing a copy of their work. So what you can do is if you want to search relevant areas of research, you can just toggle down this menu. You see there is computer science. I can just, you can just select computer science and just click search and it'll go here. And let's just do type content, sorry. Content centric networks and if I just press search, a whole bunch of papers should pop. Uh, should pop up. You see, there is information centric networks. These papers are related to what I would be interested to follow. So this is one way to get access to papers. And all the papers that are on iArchive can be accessed without a subscription. So you can get access to a whole bunch of papers very, very easily. Another uh, out outlet for getting access to good research papers is Google Scholar. Uh, it's, you can always search on Google, that's the easiest one, but Google Scholar is dedicated to finding research articles. So going to scholar.dogoogle.com can actually help as well. So exam, let's again type con content centric and you see there is already a search. If you go here, a whole bunch of papers. And one thing that is interesting, if you look at the second article, which is this one, the uh, impact of traffic mix on caching performance and content-centric networks, you can see that 
the PDF is available from archive. So Google Scholar would give you access to all the related work, but then it will tell you where you can get the PDF. And the others, I think, are Google patterns. There are a whole bunch of other papers. Some of them might just lead you to IEEE Explore. And if you have a subscription through your university, you can access those. Otherwise, you can get them through archive. Now, this is one way. These are a few ways in which you can get access to related work. And it's very important uh, to keep track of how you can get your related work because lots and lots of papers get published. Another important uh, tool to get access to good related work is to follow certain eminent researchers. This is my Google Scholar uh, web page, and you can see that there is this follow button. So what you can do is if you want to follow a particular individual, you can just go to their Google Scholar page and, and follow them. In this way, whenever they publish an article, you will get a notification uh, as to what kind of article that they have published and you can keep track of their research. So one way to do that is to identify authors or leading researchers in the field who are publishing in your area of interest and to follow them on Google Scholar. Most researchers have a Google Scholar page. So whenever they publish a new article, you will get a notification. And in that way, you can keep track of a related work in your area of research. Thank you uh, for your attention. And with this, I'll complete this particular video.